Welcome to the FCCJ. Uh, we are here on a very special event. I have uh, discovered that this is actually their first formal press conference uh, since uh, becoming the top three winners of the 53rd Miss International Beauty Pageant, which was uh, held in Tokyo. And you were selected as winners, what was it, yesterday or day before? Day before. A day before. The day before yesterday. So uh, they were uh, three contestants among s uh, many dozen? 67. 67. Uh, contestants, so still uh, in their mind, uh, they're, they're telling me it's, it's still sinking in uh, that they have been chosen uh, as the winners. So uh, imagine under such a situation, there's sort of a sh shell-shocked feeling. But let me introduce uh, the three, uh, the three uh, people we have here today. Uh, in the center uh, is, the, uh, is the winner of the contest. Uh, her name is Ms. Bea Rose Santiago from the Philippines. And I imagine she'll probably be speaking first. Uh, and then here next to me is uh, Ms. Natalie Den Decker of the Netherlands. So she was first runner up, which means placing second place. And on the far end from me over there, is Ms. Casey Radley of New Zealand. And she was the second runner-up. So the way we're going to proceed is uh, uh, each of the uh, winners are going to give probably about a five-minute presentation in which they're going to introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about the roads which led them to where they're sitting right now. And uh, as I uh, have discovered, uh, each of them has very different experience uh, in getting to uh, this place. So uh, I think it'll be interesting for all of us. So why don't we begin with the champion of the uh, 2013 Miss International Beauty Pageant. Uh, I guess we'll be calling you a beauty queen. Is that, is that term <laughs> still used? Uh, yes. So the beauty well, queen for a year at least. Uh, and that is uh, Ms. Bea Rose Santiago. Yes, good. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Bea Santiago, and I'm the newest um, Miss International 2013. Um, I come from the Philippines. Um, I studied in Canada for communications, major in PR at York University. I went to the Philippines for one year and stayed there. I went to a boot camp just to be a beauty queen, and um, it was an honor for me to be selected and represent Philippines for Miss International. Coming here, I have my whole country with me. So um, the amount of pressure, well, it wasn't a bad pressure because for me it was positive. And before I came here, I went to one of the cities that was devastated by a typhoon um, high end. And I think that was the turning point of why I went because that experience gave me a the biggest inspiration. My speech was for them. My my pageant this whole time was dedicated for the people who suffered and who was just, um, it was just a shock for me. So um, the whole time that I was here, it was not for myself, but for my whole Philippines. So I'm very thankful and I'm proud that God answered all their prayers and my, ans and my, my prayer as well. So thank you. Okay, uh, and then uh, do you want to say anything about what led you into uh, the contest to begin with? What, how is it you got into a Miss International contest? Um, well, two years ago I was 21, and um, after I finished my school, I was kind of in a just brainstorming of what I really wanted to do in my life. And my mom and my grandma before, my grandma passed away when I was 15, they've told me, to join beauty pageant and just to see what um, it, it will bring me. And um, when you're 21 and you don't know what to do in life, and there's so much opportunity outside, I wanted to try every one of it. And um, that time, Philippines has been winning beauty pageants, and I wanted to try it just to say I did. And I'm glad I did, and I've discovered that being a beauty queen is more than just pictures and glamour and glitz and because you know um, the pressure and the love from my country is so it's just something that I wanted to I wanted to I there's a memory that will last for me forever and um, I'm very happy and honored to be the fifth Miss International from the Philippines. Okay. 
Okay, thank you very much. And then we'll move on to the first runner-up, the second place uh, beauty queen of this contest, and that is Ms. Natalie Dendecker of the Netherlands. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, my name is Natalie Dendecker, and I come from the Netherlands. Actually, I grew up in a small country village in the south of the Netherlands on a farm. So uh, I, um, my world was very small, and um, I could have never expected that something like this would happen to me. And also, when I was smaller, I had an accident and I fell on my head, and then I was squinting, meaning one eye looked that way and the other eye looked the other way. So it took me uh, three major surgeries to correct my eyes and make me look straight again. And in that time, I got bullied a lot. So uh, <laughs> my biggest dream was to become... <laughs> Would you like me to go? <laughs> I'm gonna have a chat while Natalie has a breath. No. <laughs> Is that all right? No, it's okay. Uh, okay. My biggest dream was to become a good mother. <laughs> and now I'm a beauty queen. <laughs> well done. All right, uh, that was very heroic of Casey Radley to try to step in there uh, at a strategic moment. Uh, but now we'll give you your own time to okay. tell us about yourself. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa. I'm Casey from New Zealand. Um, I've had a very different experience with pageantry. Um, I've no training, etc. It's definitely um, been a ride for me just as a young woman finding my feet. Um, it's been questioned on why would I be involved with pageantry. And um, my answer is simply why not? I think that as a young woman growing up, um, you have to find your feet. You have to have as many opportunities as you can take. And so for me, the Miss International Beauty Pageant was for me to learn about who I was and I couldn't think of a better time to do so. Um, I've been in two other international pageants and have been unsuccessful and I've taken it upon myself as though I was a failure. But I've had a few years of growing up and living life and this time competing in the pageant was nothing like the experience I'd had previously. I think that with a little bit of maturity and life experience I've been able to look at the pageant as an amazing opportunity to meet other girls, other young women who are also finding themselves. And I think that once you stop competing with yourself, with other girls, you just have fun. Because it's when you stop to look at yourself and you are trying to be someone you're not, that you can't enjoy such opportunities. And I think that every moment of being in this pageant has just been one for myself and finding out who I am. And it's been very rewarding. And so when people ask why a beauty pageant, I just say, why not? Um, unfortunately, pageant pageantry isn't as celebrated in New Zealand because I think the understanding of what it means is still yet to be discovered. But I definitely think that um, now with having this third place win, hopefully I can help establish a change in what it means to be a beauty queen. Thank you. Uh, just to follow up on that last point, especially sure. for the uh, two runner-ups, uh, we, we found out that uh, back there that uh, you know in their countries it's been a long gap between the last uh, beauty queen uh, and uh, their victories here so uh, in their countries sort of the the level of interest in the infrastructure for this contest seems to be a little bit weaker than it is in the case of the Philippines so could each of you kind of address the situation in your own country in terms of uh, uh, how easy or hard it is to do this from your country Okay, so uh, the last time Netherlands won Miss International was 1961, the second year it was, ho it was held. So um, we always compare it to the Song Festival because we haven't won it in a long time too. So the level of interest went from here to here. So I hope with me being the first runner-up, I can uh, raise the level of interest uh, as well in the beauty pageants because it's so much more than just outer beauty. Uh, we are able to do so many great things with our title in terms of goodwill and charity activities. Uh, it's a big responsibility to carry this title uh, because we are ambassadors for our country and now we are worldwide ambassadors. Um, but for me, I, I also, I didn't even knew there were still beauty pageants held in Netherlands. So one day I found this advertisement that you could apply and I thought, let's be crazy, let's be silly. Let's apply, and I didn't tell anyone. 
But suddenly I got selected to come to the casting. So I was like, oh gosh, now I need to tell my family. <laughs> so I spoke to my sister and I said, okay, I, I've done something crazy. Uh, I've applied for a beauty pageant. <laughs> and then she said, okay, no worries. I, I will join you and go with you to the, uh, to the casting. But since I was so inexperienced, I took almost my whole closet because I really didn't know how it was going, how were you supposed to dress. And uh, I looked at all the girls there and then I opened my big luggage and chose my outfit for that day. Um, but it was a very successful casting and I'm happy that I decided to go there because uh, I wouldn't be here today if I didn't uh, try it. Yeah. Thank you. You can go ahead. Oh, no, it's okay, because you guys have the same thing going up. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, my first experience with an international pageant was when I was 16 years old. Um, I was Miss Teen New Zealand. And um, I actually knew I was competing five days before the final. So I, I think you can imagine how much preparation, how much experience I would have going in there was um, nothing. Um, but I think with my, upgr my upgrowing, and how I um, have been educated by my parents is just to hold your head high, throw yourself in the deep end and learn. So I learned very quickly that um, with pageantry comes a lot of envy, comes a lot of jealousy, comes a lot of negativity. And I think as a 16 year old girl it can be, it can be destructive. But you can either use it as destructively or you can use it positively. And um, I definitely used it to power myself and have continued on doing so. Um, so the experience I've had, I get a lot of negativity thrown my way and a lot of questions on why, but I think that with education you can really learn on how to deal with different situations. So when I decided to compete again this year, um, I, in, in short I surrounded myself with a lot of positive people. Um, if you surround yourself with good people, I do believe it has an effect on who you are. Um, so the pageant was a fantastic experience for me. While I haven't gone through the training or the experience or the extent that someone like Bea has, <laughs> I've definitely learnt a lot this last week um, and had a lot of fun. And I think that at the end of the day, the fun is the most important part of the pageant. So very different experience to what I think a lot of the other girls have had. Um, more so in a way that's probably a good thing. Um, there's not the pressure on me from my country to succeed. Um, you know, I don't have that pressure and the, the worrying of whether I'm successful or not. So I think that I've been able to enjoy it a lot more knowing that whatever result I get is a good thing. And do you think it's going to be easier for people from New Zealand to follow you now that you've achieved this? I hope so. Um, I'll, be in, I'll be involved with Miss Junior New Zealand um, when I get back. And um, we work with around 60 girls, um, young girls who are maybe 11. And um, we try to educate them on how to make friends, have fun. You know, after winning Miss Friendship, I think maybe I can have some sort of an impact on them growing up. You know, as a young girl, I mean, in today's society, you have to understand how destructive the media can be. You know, I think that there's so much positivity around supporting you, but there's also so much around pulling you down as a young woman. And I think that when you're dealing with young girls, you try to prepare them for that in life so that you can only be stronger. And finally, uh, your situation, which is quite different. I <laughs> As you can see, you know, I'm the third, um, I'm the third international title holder from the Philippines this year. We have Miss World, we have Miss Supranational, and then me, Miss International. So um, I guess the Philippines is just beautiful woman with, you know, class and <laughs> I don't know. But so, um, what I really think the reason why we've been winning and for the past five years, you know, it, I think it's because we're the people of the Philippines supports us 1000%. They're there to protect you, to help you, to guide you, everything, pray for you, feed you if they can. That's how much love I get from the Philippines. That's why I think that's why I was so inspired and so motivated to just have fun and what I prayed for was just to get to top three because I really want my Filipinos to have a Merry Christmas and God just gave me the crown. So that's I think that's more than I can achieve. Um, coming from Canada, I was a, a model. I was the only Filipina model in Toronto. I was with Mo I was with Ford and then I went to Elite and I left all that, you know, my school, my family, my friends, my life in Canada because I really want to pursue my dream to be a beauty queen and I I don't regret anything because now 
my experience throughout the whole two years almost is something that I cannot even explain because it's beautiful. All of the ups and downs, you know, all the blood and the blisters and the cries is incomparable to this experience. It's amazing and only a few people can experience this. So I'm very happy I'm one of the few who made it to history. Thank you. All right. Well, now we're going to open it up to the audience's questions. We have uh, more than 40 minutes, so there's plenty of time to explore the questions in which you're interested. Uh, yes, uh, let's start with this gentleman here. Uh, please come up to uh, the microphone, and before you ask your question, identify yourself and your institution. Christopher Santos from ABS-CBN. Uh, on behalf of the Filipino people, congratulations to you ladies. Uh, Bea and Ms. Santiago, we're very proud of you and <laughs> allow me to address this question to you. Yes. You've uh, mentioned in your winning speech during the pageant that uh, as Miss International, you'll be upholding uh, international camaraderie. Mm -hmm. Is there any particular uh, platform, organization, or initiative through which you would like to fulfill that? Well, um, actually, the girls and I have been talking about just today. We've visited so many uh, places already that um, that's also with the ICA group. So um, after that, I think maybe January we're gonna go to the Philippines, or they're coming to my land, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show them to one of the few cities that was hit by high end because I want them to experience the same experience I had. So the humbling and that the just the experience brings you to life. And um, I want them to have that too because I think that was the reason why I, I had a most amazing experience and um, that I won is because of that experience. And I want them to have the same emotion. I want them to experience how it's like to actually make someone happy even after they've lost everything. Because for me, that's, that's priceless. <laughs> Thank you very much and Thank welcome you. to the Philippines in advance. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, next question. Uh, Caldun. Thank you very much. Khaldun Azhari, Panorite News. Congratulations and all the best for your plans. I read once in a survey, uh, American survey, that the husbands who marry beautiful women die early because of the high maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm wondering what is your uh, advice to uh, men and how do you evaluate the marriage institution after you uh, get such a high uh, ranking title, thank you. <laughs> Is that for all of us? <laughs> I think we want to know all of your answers, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to go first? Oh, um, uh, for me, I don't care about money or power. It's all about love. I'm, I'm, I come from a family where a woman have a say. <laughs> so uh, I come from a family where uh, well, actually, I'm from a broken family. My parents separated when I was just 10. So if I want to be wed, I want it to be because of love and that I'm very sure. So um, I'm going to wait until I find that Prince Charming of mine. And I hope I won't get a divorce or anything like that because I don't want my children to suffer. I want my children to have the same experience as me with my grandparents because I want to grow my children with love and, com and passion with my, with my partner and I. So, yeah. <laughs> I think it's about finding the right person who has the same lifestyle as you. Now, I'm not saying that I think I'm high maintenance, but I definitely think I live a busy lifestyle where I want to achieve lots. And I think that if you are in a relationship with someone who doesn't have the same ambition, that it can be very stressful. But I think if you're with someone who is ambitious like yourself, I think that the journey together would just be exciting. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, having this great title, it didn't change me as a person. It just gives me the possibility to do more and greater things. So for me, my partner needs to be very supportive and understanding, not jealous, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then he, he needs to be able to miss me sometimes because I have a, I have a bigger purpose in life now. <laughs> yes, and I think it's important that he supports that and understands that. And that's all that uh, I would ask for in a relationship. Maybe a pilot so they can travel with us. <laughs> <laughs> all right, excellent. Uh, next question. That was easy. Really? <laughs> Come on. Really? Yes, I, I, I was telling them in the back room how journalists are such tigers <laughs> who ask such difficult questions, and 
and now we come out here and you are all so shy. <laughs> Well, uh, if you have an interesting statement to make, maybe, <laughs> while we're waiting for the next question. Hi, I'm Hiroshi. I'm not a uh, journalist. I'm a member of this club. Mm -hmm. But uh, about 40 years ago, I had a great experience with our Miss International uh, goals. And at that time, it, uh, we had uh, the kind of small uh, reception for you, uh, for you, like you, and the I, expo I, I ex uh, uh, escorted the ladies from Netherlands. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. And it was my first time to hand in hand in hand with the Netherlands uh, ladies, and I was very happy. So. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. That is my comment. <laughs> well, it's good to hear that you had uh, such a great experience with the lady from Netherlands. Actually, I had quite an experience myself, as you may know if you watched the final, because uh, my country used uh, to be called Holland in the past. So if you look back uh, in the history of Miss International, you'll see that the only winner we had from our country in 1961 is also called Miss Holland. But now, uh, our official international name is Netherlands, although the translation in most languages still remains Holland. So during the final, when they announced the top 15, they said something like Holland, but very fast. And normally, uh, they call me Netherlands now. <laughs> and my roommate was a beautiful Miss Poland. So there was a confusion which country was called. <laughs> And I, I, I wasn't sure if it was Holland, and I saw Miss Poland already walking up to the front. So, um, yeah, I, I, I actually thought I wasn't even in top 15. So I went to the backstage with the other girls. I ate, I, I ate a whole bag of <laughs> potato chips. <laughs> and then they came in the backstage and they said, where's Miss Netherlands? You were supposed to go out there. They called your name, they called your country. So it was a very uh, emotional, double and exciting evening. And um, uh, but it makes it even more special, and um, at least I shared it with my roommates. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, this is just a continuation of your question. Sorry. Uh, when I go back to the Philippines, of course, I'm going to continue my um, my duties for my national um, um, directors, which is um, I'm with I'm actually a Gawad Galinga ambassador. If you guys know, it's a housing project, and we have communities of communities and you would just build it from ground zero to having their own you know everything school and all so I'm gonna continue doing that I'm also gonna do Kapamilia Sagip Kapamilia which is also my partner when we went to the copies and actually hand in hand um, re reached out with the uh, the victims of the typhoon so I'm gonna continue doing that and of course I will ask them if my beautiful you know, first runner up and second runner up can come with me this January because I want them to experience it. And hopefully, you know, UNICEF and um, more Red, Red Cross and, all, and most of them will help us too because I really want, you know, everyone to see and experience the same feeling, how to help make someone happy. Because mm -hmm. it's a different, it's priceless. And I've felt it and I want them to also experience it. <laughs> okay. uh, Joel? Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Um, hello. I'm Joël Lejean from France, uh, RTL Broadcasting, Radio TV. Uh, congratulations, you have reached the, the stars, and now you have a lot of responsibilities. And uh, I have listened to all of you, and I thought it was really impressive because you, all of you and each of you have an individu individuality. You are very special and difference so Thank congratulations you. for not having the Thanks. same kind of glamour you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have two little questions to maybe to each of you um, you, you said um, it can be very destructive mm -hmm. I'd like you to talk about it okay. all of you and also simple question and I think everyone want to hear about it what is your definition of beauty okay <laughs> thank okay. you good questions thank you okay first part um, media is destructive um, I guess I'm I have joined university earlier this year um, because I wanted to start my own online interactive magazine and I wanted to empower women in the business society and try and empower them to start their own businesses. Obviously New Zealand has a very high place for females in business. 
Um, but after studying English and film, television and media studies with the ambition of being a journalist, um, I really had a bit of an eye-opener as to how to construct stories, um, perspectives to take. Sometimes you really have to put the nail in the wound to try and get something juicy. Um, also with the rankings of media, um, you know, you definitely have corporations that will take certain perspectives because it's an interesting read. And sometimes that interesting read can mean sacrificing someone's happiness or someone's positivity. So while I don't think that's the only intention of the media, I think the media can be excellent. It can also be very destructive. And I think that with the place of women in society worldwide, it's very different. But I think that there is, um, this was in my final speech as well, I think there's a lot of what you should and shouldn't be. And I think that that's sometimes a perspective around beauty pageants, that it's maybe all for appearance and what you look like. And I think that for a young girl growing up, you know, you do have a lot of split families, you do maybe have a lot of absent mothers, not maybe by choice. But I think it's very important to be following a good example. And I don't think that the media always sets a good example. I mean, I've been criticised, I've been told I'm too fat, I've been told I'm too this. But at the end of the day, it's up here that counts. And I think that if you feed your brain the right thoughts, you will think in the most positive way. Um, I have now slightly changed my degree towards psychology, if you cannot tell. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I do think the media can be destructive, um, but it can be empowering. It just depends on how you choose to interpret words. Thank you. Well, for me, you know, I come from a country where most beauty queens are from, so everything that we do, every, what we wear, how we put our hand, how we do our hair, how our eyebrows grow is being criticized or it's always Bea did this, Bea did that, Bea's boyfriend is this. So it, <laughs> you know with, with a crown it comes with big responsibility because you, your personal life mm -hmm. is not there with you anymore. So with me after I won my national pageant I prepared myself for what's worse or what's good but you know I think it's because my, my parents my my grandparents and my whole small town in the Philippines have protected and loved me for for you know for 15 years of my life that no matter how the negative the, a person can can write on my pictures or how much um, hatred they can just throw at me it doesn't work anymore because um, I'm tough because of my family in the background that I'm from. So I think that growing up a family, the, the, a strong family background is very important. So I think the children nowadays should um, really have to grow with their parents who love them so much and would um, give them advice that they would um, use it until they're grown up. Because for me, my grandparents did a good job because no matter how hating, I mean, you know, negative media can throw at me, it doesn't it just go like this in here because I know it deep inside how who and what I am that's, and that makes me strong and I think that's why I you stand out out of 67 girls because of your character not because of your beauty so that I think is why we won the three of us because of our character <laughs> so in my country we are known for our very down-to-earth mentality or as we say it, acting normal is crazy enough. <laughs> so for example, when uh, our host last year in Netherlands uh, was hosting our Dutch National uh, Song Festival, she was wearing a blue sparkly dress. And the next day, uh, all the media wrote about her dress. Did you see what she was wearing? Nothing about the song festival itself, but uh, they rather have you uh, hosting a show in jeans and a normal t-shirt than in a sparkly dress. So that can be quite frustrating sometimes because um, they always find something uh, physically to criticize instead of looking more at the content or what things are about. And it's the same way with beauty pageants. I always have to fight the cliche that <coughs> beauty, uh, they call it meat auctions in Netherlands. But I hope with being myself, I can prove them wrong uh, I studied law, I have a double master in law and I graduated with a GPA of 4.0 and my ambition is to become one of the very few female professors at Dutch universities because I believe there are lots of beautiful women but too little on top positions. So um, uh, I, I, I just, uh, I think it's good actually that the media is so uh, critical sometimes 
because it's our job to prove them wrong. And I'm more than happy to do that. <laughs> and uh, on the other hand, they can be very supportive as well. So uh, we should also be thankful for that. And um, they also um, teach us more about the world by being yes. so critical, revealing secrets from our governments. So it's a tough job and somebody <laughs> needs to do it. <laughs> we have to do it. <laughs> and then about my definition of beauty, I believe that everything is beautiful. It's just that we can't always see it or we don't always appreciate it. And beauty really has to come from the inside. So if you don't like what you see in the mirror, you have to change it from the inside. You have to believe in yourself. You have to trust in yourself. And that's what makes a person beautiful. Because if you feel beautiful from the inside, it will show true to the outside. And then again, also during the beauty contest, there are so many beauty queens from all over the world. And everybody is so different. You cannot just speak about uh, looks, you know, beauty from the outside. Because a beauty queen from Africa, she looks so different than a beauty queen from Asia or from Europe. We are all beautiful, but in a very different way. So it's a beauty pageant, is, is, it's two weeks. It's not just the final night that you see on television. We do so many activities, so many projects. They really uh, are testing what's inside of, uh, of us. Yes. And um, yeah, a lot of people just only think about the final night on television, yeah. but they don't know that it's so much more. It's really about the inner beauty. Yes. So that's my vision of beauty. Thank you. Uh, I'll throw Joel's second question back at you in a much tougher form. Beauty is. Complete the sentence, one sentence. Try to con make very concise. What is your definition of beauty, e starting from the end? Beauty is what? Beauty cannot, cannot be defined, full stop. You cannot define it. Everyone's interpretation of beauty is different. Uh, my interpretation will be different to yours. Yours will be different to someone else's, so I'm not going to try and define it. Well, for me, being beautiful is a gift. It must start from the inside for everyone to see how beautiful you are. So it's not something that you have to change. It's something within you already. And for me, my beauty secret every day is I look up in the mirror and I say, hey, beautiful. And I start believing it. And then everyone starts believing me too. Because I always believe that it's 50% you and 50% them. <laughs> right? And then for me, I, I said it before, everything and everyone is beautiful. It's just that we can't always see it or appreciate it. Do you mind if I add quickly to Joel's question? Sure. When I say media, um, I don't necessarily mean journalists. Um, with media in today's society, anyone can be a journalist. And an uneducated voice can pick out what they want. And I think that you need to explore the fact that media is social media. And with Facebook, etc., as an example, you can comment and have your opinion as many times as you want from as many different perspectives, and you can be anonymous. And I think that a lot of young women are using social media as an outlet. So when I say the media can be destructive, I'm not necessarily reflecting the people in this room, but everyone, because they are all an outlet for communication. Yes. OK, Patrick. Patrick Solnoy, Zürcher Zeitung from Switzerland. It is a custom at uh, beauty pageants that the queen of the year before hands over her crown mm -hmm. to the current queen. This wasn't the case two days ago. Uh, what were you ta told that uh, why Miss uh, Yoshimatsu could not attend? And if anybody of the management is in the room, uh, Miss uh, Yoshimatsu claims that she was basically told not to come to play sick because uh, there was pressure from sponsors because she's <coughs> fighting against um, a manager of a major company who's stalking her. What's, what do you re reply to these allegations, please? Um, thank you for that question. Um, I was actually a little bit sad that she wasn't the one that crowned me, but you know what? Alejandra, the 2008 Miss International, was actually my idol out of everyone, even Miss Philippines 2005, who won Miss International. It was Alejandra that was my favorite, and I really reviewed the whole show that she did that, that year. And it was, it was just heartbreaking for me that last year wasn't the one, but it's this year. But um, we were told that 
she she wasn't feeling well and that there were a lot of um there were someone a stalker yes that and she's not it's not safe for her to go to that place i mean to the coronation night and so miss alejandra was uh, invited but she was uh, very nice to us alejandra she's amazing and we just love her and we were both crying in the back when she crowned me because <laughs> Yeah, I think we really haven't been educated on what actually is going on, to give you a direct answer. Um, I don't think that when you are going through your moment and your experience that they want to bring a negative sort of yes. outside world into what's going on. So we haven't necessarily been educated on what is going on, so I can't tell you what is and isn't going, going on. on. Um, but I can tell you that the experience um, without her, you know, it was very sad that she couldn't be there. Um, but as for why, um, just read what's in the papers and make your own opinion, I guess. Although we heard, although we heard about her press press, I mean press conference also, and you no, know, we're behind her. So um, I hope that you know everything works out well for her, and uh, she's always in our prayers. <laughs> Natalie, any thoughts? Uh, I don't really um, want to give an opinion about the situation because I don't know the details. Mm -hmm. I can only uh, talk about uh, the experience I do have. And my experience this year was with Alejandra, Miss International 2008. And it was a great experience to have her around. She was always uh, amongst the girls. She joined our activities, very friendly. She was like a mother of us and we could ask her anything. If we were going on a group picture, she was arranging everything. She said, okay, girls, let's all stand with our right foot in front. So um, yeah, that was really good experience and uh, we felt all very happy that she was there to uh, share this experience with us. Uh, I should add before we move on that uh, actually the uh, event which he was talking about ha occurred here at this club oh. a few days ago and uh, if you go to our YouTube page uh, you can get the, the scoop on <laughs> what actually uh, was reported here and what was uh, said. Uh, all right, uh, next question. All right, well, I have one which I've been uh, holding back. Um, what about uh, misconceptions? I mean, uh, in beauty pageants, as beauty queens, you know, obviously uh, you're, you're in the focus of attention. What concerns you that people are going to get the wrong impression from the new role that you play? What is it that you're going to have to completely fight against every time you have an interview or, or uh, deal with uh, the public? Uh, attention that comes with your new role. Well, you know, um, I think one of the negative stuff that we've been getting is that beauty queens are diva, <laughs> or that um, we're just all material, and that we're all just the face. I mean, I'm actually very happy that you gave this opportunity for us, so that you can you know us better, because we're we're more than just the stage presence. Where we can talk. And we can walk the talk also. So I hope that you s wait and be patient of for the next year that we're going to be working on our responsibility because we are actually thinking of doing more for even just the three of us. We want to do more and more because we really want to help out and we want to fulfill the, the duties that um, ICA have given to us because this is more than just a crown. This is our responsibility. So I want to do that, especially for my people. I want to help out more for my people at this moment, which they need the most. Um, where do I start? <laughs> There's a lot of mis. Um, I have a feeling that Casey, you have a, a lot to say on this issue. So <laughs> I always go have ahead, a lot fire to say. <laughs> um, I guess I'm probably one of the least stereotypical pageant queens ever. I hate even saying the word pageant queen because I'm so far from it. I'm just a little Kiwi girl from, from New Zealand and people go, where's New Zealand? Um, but I think I have, I mean, the, the biggest one for me is world peace. Um, that is always <laughs> what everyone reduces pageantry down to. And it's frustrating, but I think that if, if the journey isn't hard, it's not worth fighting. Um, I definitely think that being given the opportunity to speak is the hugest part for me because I have so much to say, I have such a strong opinion and, and opinions that people might not agree with. But um, for me it's the image because I don't necessarily fit the right sort of 
pageant expectations. I came with one 20 kilo suitcase, three jumpers, pairs of jeans, two cocktail dresses, <laughs> you know. I don't have a bag full of shoes, I don't have a bag full of dresses. You know, I'm not that stereotypical girl and never will be. Um, so for me, the biggest thing to fight is what is a beauty queen and make my own opinion of what a beauty queen is and try to enforce that on other young ladies as well. Yeah, and um, for me, it's uh, the misconception I spoke about in my country that beauty pageants are all about outer looks instead of inner beauty. And I see beauty pageants as a great way uh, for women, uh, for women empowerment, actually. They gave us a world platform, a world stage. They gave us a voice in the world. Mm. They gave us a great title. They gave us the opportunity to do many great things. I mean, we visited a, um, a kindergarten when we were here in Japan. And being able with, uh, to put a smile on people's face with just being present, that is something to be very grateful of, uh, bringing joy in the life of other people. So it's a very honorful and grateful job. And then also the beauty pageant itself, um, you have the chance to make a great journey into a new country, to learn so much about the country itself, about the culture. Mm -hmm. And every single girl went there all by herself. We all came on our own into a new country, a new place um, we never met before. And now we have the opportunity to meet so many girls, all from different countries, from all around the world. And that is something so special. And even though you just met, you feel like you know each other much longer because you share a once in a lifetime experience with each other. And uh, ICA also really wants to promote a goodwill, friendship and love between nations. And that's how we experienced the pageants uh, over the last two weeks. Because we made so many friends from all, all around the world. Even though we are the winners, they were still happy for us because eventually somebody needs to win, somebody needs to do the job. But the pageant is about so much more than that. For me, the greatest thing I won are so many new friends from all around the world and so many countries I can visit after this pageant yes. and stay with friends and experience their countries on their way mm -hmm. uh, with them as my private tour guide. So that's yes. something to be very grateful uh, of. Yes, Thank I guess you. it's cheaper for us to travel now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can have a Euro trip and pay nothing. <laughs> all right, I open it back up to the floor. Any questions? <coughs> Well, go ahead, Caldun, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you very much, Khaldun Azhar, again, for your insights. I'm, I'm really impressed by your uh, presentation. I usually cover uh, political and energy news, so I uh, pushed to come here to just sit. But, uh, <laughs> but now <laughs> I really... See how we are. <laughs> I have a good story. But uh, please forgive me for my question. I agree totally with you about that the beauty comes from inside. So why don't we keep the outside as it is, as we born with it? Mm. There is a French philosopher said, we always uh, discover that we married another person in the morning. <laughs> when men wake up, they discover like different <laughs> person. Then the wedding night, you know, you have great uh, cosmetics. So since that uh, beauty is from inside, do you think we will see one day uh, that, uh, that uh, pageant uh, competition held without cosmetics? Thank you. Um, actually, my mom is an assistant um, a, a surgery clinic in a, sur in a surgery clinic, and um, even though she works there, she always tells me not to go through it because it's psychologically also damaging for you. Not just the body, the body sometimes because it doesn't react so well with the plastic that you put into your body, it reacts and that's where you get cancer or sometimes worse than that and also psychologically you cannot accept yourself sometimes that you battle within inside so for me if you can go to the gym and do it and you know few lines of makeup can actually give you a nice nose or a few lines in the eyes can give you a bigger eyes we have we have enough fake lashes to put in our eyes to pop up the eyes so we don't need to be cut and be hurt and to bleed for for us to feel like we're the next beauty queen. Because if you can do it with, you know, makeup and a little bit of this and that, 
you can do it. Because for me, the character is what makes you win. It's the presence. It doesn't matter how beautiful or how big or how glamorous, how expensive your gown is. If you cannot do it well on stage, the, the girl who isn't pretty but who has the, the best presence is going to win over you. So for me, it doesn't matter if you have to go through a surgery. It's, it's how you are as a person that makes you win. <laughs> so I would love to be in a pageant with no cosmetics. <laughs> to me, it would make life so much easier. <laughs> you know, I, when I came to this pageant, you know, I, I don't have abs. You know, I wore my one piece. Um, I wore what I was comfortable with. And my boyfriend definitely is waking up next to another person because I don't look like this every day. <laughs> and um, I think it's really important to recognize that. Um, the question is not would we ever be in it or would there ever be one, it's would society allow us to have one because I think it is not us who enforce that but expectations of others. So I think that it would be great to have something like that but it, the interesting question would be how would society react to it. Yeah. And uh, there are already beauty, uh, some national contests in the world that uh, don't allow you to undergo any changes of yourself. So I think that's a, a nice first step into maybe reaching your goal. But then again, I don't see makeup really as something negative. I don't. Some people can say, oh, she put so much makeup or it's like a mask. But um, like I said, um, I, I see makeup as an enhancement of beauty. You can enhance certain features in your face or uh, you can enhance your eyes or your lips or whatever you like of yourself. So uh, I don't see, I don't think that there's anything really wrong with wearing makeup uh, as long as you don't wear it as a mask, uh, as long as it doesn't make you another person. You still stay who you are, you still uh, are yourself. So for example, me, I was very prepared every night. I did my hair every morning. I put on nice makeup. But um, I just wanted to show my commitment and my motivation being in this beauty pageant because at home I never wear makeup. I don't do my hair really, but I uh, for me it was just a way of showing my commi commitment and my passion. So I don't really see it that negative. Thank you. When we came here representing our country, so we want to give the best we can. Because we didn't come here with our names, we came here with the sashes of our country. So we're representing individuals in, in our country. And as long as we don't show how bad we are from the inside, and you know, <laughs> as long as we're not hurting anyone, I don't think there's something wrong with, of course, makeup. And, and, and actually, putting on makeup, I also, yes. it also made me feel like an artist. Because <laughs> you are very creative. I, uh, I tried on so many new colors and so many new things. So I really feel like I almost became a painter or professional yes. artist. Uh, and I had fun with it. And trust me, these girls are beautiful without makeup. <laughs> She's my roommate and my neighbor. <laughs> So, you know, even before winning, we were very close. So we've seen each other in our PJs. So First time I ever met you was with no makeup on it one yeah, in the morning. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, we're beautiful with or without our makeup. So I think that's... But the character is what makes made us win, I think. But you can tell right now, right? <laughs> we're just full of personality. And thank God it showed in, in the stage. And that's the reason why we have crowns now. And the funny thing is that um, since we were with so many girls, uh, they all divide us into different groups with our own chaperone. And we happen to came from the same, same group, group, group D. Yes. So we have spent a lot of time together during the pageant. So us all three winning together, it's, it was, it's so amazing. Yes, it's so it's special crazy. and it never happened before. Yeah. When we were called for top 15, we were in the back doing a triangle, holding hands. It's like, oh my God, Everybody. imagine if this is the, the final three and then went to top five and we we're just like, oh my God, like really? Imagine if we're an, again in top three and then it happened and we we're just like, oh my God, really it happened? Because it was, it was I, I, well, we were all speechless. I mean, Casey and Natalie, <laughs> Natalie, I know she was going to win. She, uh, when she was called for, for uh, first runner-up, I was like, oh my god, this is me. Is this me? Is this me? And I looked at Columbia and them, they were just congratulating me already. So I'm just like, oh my god, this is me. Well, it's really funny. <laughs> uh, I do have to say that um, when me and Miss Philippines, we both had a very special feeling about this pageant. It's something you feel and you cannot describe in words, but uh, we are very dedicated, giving our best. And we did have the feeling 
amongst each other like <laughs> yes. mm, it's going it's to be you or me <laughs> and it's funny if you look back at the video you can see that we were actually taking each other's <laughs> hands when they were announcing the top three yeah and <laughs> we felt inside even though we didn't say see it, it yeah. say it or uh, spoke it out but we felt amongst each other the one that they are going to call now as first runner-up the other one of us will be the winner so you see when they called me as first runner-up you see me whispering in your ear congratulations because <laughs> for some reason uh we we knew we felt yeah. that's also why i asked my mom to come over she came to tokyo all by herself because before i even came here i had just this good feeling from inside i was really well pe prepared and um i just told her I, i i would appreciate it if you would be there with me somewhere in 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 the audience even though i couldn't see her <laughs> from the stage i still felt her presence and uh, it was a very special moment mm -hmm. yeah my mom too came to um from canada and um she i gave her some flags and she gave it out to some of the filipinos which is fun i haven't seen my mom for nine months because i live on my own in the philippines and she lives in canada so um the night that she came was um the pre i mean the night of the rehearsals then the next day is our coronation it was i think i cried a lot and um, i think that also just gave me uh the confidence and just the relaxation coming from your own mom i think that's also she's actually she, i think she's my lucky charm because my national also she was there she flew from canada and then my international she flew again from canada so i think she's my lucky charm so i'm thankful that my mom came because um, it, it wouldn't be the same. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Edwin, you have a question? Yeah. yeah. This might be the last question, depending on how long the answers are. Sorry. Uh, Edwin Carmiol. <laughs> Sorry, I just like to talk. <laughs> Edwin Carmiol, freelance. Do the organizers subject the candidates to some do's and don't do's? And what are they? Thank you. Um, don'ts is to not leave the premises without permission. Of course, because we come from a different country, we you don't want to lose one of the 67 girls because it's your responsibility. What it, what happens if we just go to Shibuya by ourselves and we get lost? Who's gonna help us? And um, the do's is probably keep smiling to everyone mm -hmm. and just be nice. And yeah, I guess that was just the don'ts was just tell us where you're going and don't leave the area where we're going to. I think that's about it, right? Um, yes. I think one of the things, the do's, was definitely be a good representative, mm -hmm. be a role model. So I think that's definitely being enforced that that is not an expectation, but it's a responsibility that I think comes with the beauty pageant and having a voice. So making sure you have the right sort of voice. Um, they've definitely not told us what that voice should be. They've left that to our interpretation and they've obviously chosen out of the contestants who they thought had the best voice and representation. But there's definitely not been a, you should be this, you should be that, mm -hmm. otherwise I wouldn't be here. Yeah, and uh, of course the do is also be nice to each other, make friends, uh, because we are all wonderful and uh, this is a great opportunity. So enjoy your time, stay who you are and enjoy every single moment because otherwise you will be at home later and then you will have regrets. So uh, experience pageants without regrets, enjoy it, be yourself. That's all you can really do, really do. enjoy, have fun, make friends. And then finally, at uh, the last evening at the finals, we'll see what happens. We will hear who is the winner. I don't be really believe that you can influence that in a certain way. All you can do really is be yourself and have fun. All right, well, I believe at the end, how about one last question? You each come from different countries. You have people at home, people in your countries and your home. What's your message? Let's say if you have a national news reporter here from your country, what would you want to tell them specifically to your country's people? You're oh. here? <laughs> from New Zealand? Really? <laughs> There's someone wanting to report it? Um, the message I would say would be um, to support young women, um, support them in their endeavors, whatever they might be. Um, don't judge a book by its cover. Allow us to have a voice. And um, definitely appreciate different opinions in society. I think that everyone has something else to bring to the table and one thing alone is not enough. Bringing everyone's opinions together really makes it beautiful. And I think my country does that beautifully. Um, I just think we need more of that when it comes to beauty pageants. 
Well, for me, we actually have um, my national uh, network is actually here. So, mabuhay ang Philippines. Um, thank you so much. And um, I'm coming home tomorrow, so hopefully I see you in um, the Nae Airport. And uh, my homecoming is going to be my gift for you guys. And uh, so I really want to thank Mrs. Stella Araneta. She's the first Miss International ever to win. And um, she's my national director. She trained me since after um, I won the national pageant in the Philippines. I also want to thank the KF family for training me before I even won national pageant. So um, all the sweats and everything have paid off. Um, Tito Rogel, thank you so much for adapting me and being my, my dad and my mom at the same time when, when I was alone in the Philippines. And um, my family who flew from Philippines, my mom who flew from Canada, um, and of course God, because this opportunity is just overwhelming and I think this is just the best gift ever before Christmas, so thanks. And um, thank you guys for being here <laughs> and just um, getting to know us better. We're more than just the stage and um, the crown, so thank you for giving that, us this opportunity to talk. Well, I would like to say that, uh, of course, I, uh, I'm happy that I could bring back this victory to my country. I hope it will uh, raise attention for beauty pageants again in a positive way. And um, I want to thank, of course, my friends and family and all the people that have believed in me and supported me. And I hope that the Dutch people uh, will, will look at this uh, only in a positive way and take an example to people from other countries like the Philippines mm -hmm. because I got so much support from <laughs> yeah. her country. So yes. And uh, they were all sending me very friendly, very positive message, uh, messages. I even had uh, fans in Japan here. They were, came uh, to bring me presents in the hotel. It was really a. You also got the presents from her. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I shared it with uh, the other beauty queens. It was uh, such an amazing overwhelming experience but I, I think it shows uh, how we all must <clears throat> how we all must feel about this experience just in a positive way uh, encourage the young women uh, going out there representing your country be proud of of them because we really want to try our best put our putting our countries only in a positive way on the world map yeah. so I hope that's what I brought back to Netherlands and to the world thank you thank you everyone thank you <laughs> Okay, well, we have a little custom here at the FCCJ is that anybody subjected to an hour of these people uh, get uh, a little bit of a prize of their own, and that's an honorary membership to the club that lasts for a year. Wow. Uh, oh, wow. Now, this is Thank the stage you. of your victory, so maybe if you do come back, you can, uh, on the other side of this wall here, there's a very nice bar uh, where people <laughs> socialize, so you'll be able to get in and we won't lock the doors on you. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, uh, the honorary membership for uh, Ms. Bea Rose oh, wow. Santiago. Oh my God, it's an honor. Thank you. <laughs> and congratulations you. on your major victory. Thank you. And here I have an honorary membership for Ms. Thank Natalie Dendecker of the Netherlands. Thank you very much Thank for coming. So much. And finally, uh, the second runner up and uh, very articulate future. <laughs> probably future member of this club since she is becoming a journalist, Ms. Casey Radley. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Thank you. And I guess we'll get them to stand up for about 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so from your seats, you may take your last photographs now, and then we'll allow them to leave, and uh, you should stay in place for just a few moments. All right, well, thank you very much. Let's allow them to leave, and then the rest of us can go as well. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak.